Let's go live to the Finance Minister, Simon Birmingham. Appreciate your time, as always. Let's start with the issue of, of jobs. Incredible number, 4%. I guess the flip side of that, though, Minister, is a lot of businesses can't find workers, skilled workers right now. So that's, that's the, the, the difficult side of that equation, isn't it? Well, Kieran, it's great to be with you. And, uh, and yes, indeed, they are incredible job numbers. And, uh, and uh, you're right, uh, there are challenges in parts of the economy in terms of uh, workforce challenges. But that's a better and a happier problem to have than the alternative of very high unemployment. And let's not forget that when the pandemic struck, uh, the forecast was that unemployment could head up into the teens, uh, that we could see a prolonged recession that would leave many young Australians sitting on a dole queue for years and years to come, which was the history from past recessions. But instead, what we've got is 375,000 more Australians in work today than pre-COVID. Uh, this is a world-leading outcome in terms of employment in the Australian economy. Uh, it really is achieving remarkable feats in terms of having come through a recession and bounced out as strongly as we have. And it's a demonstration of the effectiveness of the economic supports our government put in place to keep businesses afloat, to keep employees connected to jobs, and then to have a rebuild plan that has been fuelled and driven by business investment that isn't just creating jobs today, but will drive productivity in the years to come. Well, the headline rate is, is good, obviously. It is, you know, everyone welcome, welcomes that. The, the ABS says that the hours worked um, rebounded in February, but they're still below what they were pre-Delta, May 2021. So there's a fair way to go in terms of not just the, the job number, but the hours worked in getting people back and managing what is effectively those iso isolation periods, those close contact rules, managing that while we face potentially yeah, another wave. It's precarious. Uh, indeed, Kieran, there's nothing to be taken for granted. And, uh, and that is uh, a very important point in, in a world in which we're still managing the impacts of COVID and the globe is still grappling with the economic recovery from COVID, but now facing uh, global inflationary pressures, which Australia uh, is handling again better than much of the rest of the world with inflation running around half of that of the United States, uh, but still global pressures that we have to be mindful of. Throw on top of that a war in Europe that is having tragic consequences and causing huge supply chain and other disruptions for different parts of the global economy. And it's clear that we can't take uh, and we as a government will not take Australia's economic recovery for granted. Uh, we know that in framing the budget in less than two weeks' time, yep. we have to keep the priority on strong economic growth, on employment growth, uh, on managing to ensure that we achieve the miracle of virtual full employment by, uh, by getting unemployment down to the lows they are and keeping it and pushing it below 4% uh, where possible, but also carefully managing uh, the economy so that we don't add further to global interest rate pressures and, uh, and make sure that we uh, are conscious very much uh, of the different pressures that different Australian households face so as a result of So in that context, because the, rates, the rate pressures are, are potent right now, the Fed moved overnight um, in the US projecting another six hikes this year. It's inevitable that rates will, will rise here, isn't it? Well, the Reserve Bank's always said that, Kieran, uh, that, uh, that in setting such abnormally low and historically low uh, interest rates that there will be a point at which they normalise. Uh, what we as a government want to make they sure... They haven't always said this year, though, thing. have they? Pressure's on... It is going to happen. No, they, like all it, of us, have months. to respond to, to, to changing global circumstances, and I'm pretty sure the Reserve Bank, no more than, uh, than anybody else, forecast a war in Europe and the oil price spikes and other factors that are, uh, are now... Uh, reframing parts of the global economy. Uh, but what we are intent on doing uh, is, as we've done successfully, keeping the pressure on job creation, but making sure we don't do anything that adds to uh, the pressure on interest rates uh, and that we frame a budget that is, uh, is very careful in terms of trying to support Australians, as we've done before. Uh, our income tax so, cuts just, but just uh, are explain to me how, how do you do that? dollars a month into the pockets of households. How do you do that? in terms of providing support on the one hand for cost of living pressures but not provide inflationary pressures at the same time by putting more money into the economy? 
Well, clearly, I'm not going to speak to, to specific measures, and I, I thank you. You're one of the few interviews I've done in the last week or so that hasn't uh, hasn't gone to direct points of budget speculation. But you do it very carefully. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, that each of the steps we take are carefully structured and targeted. Um, and you do it also mindful of what you've already done uh, and what we have achieved as a government uh, is to have ensured that Australians have got more disposable income uh, to the tune of somebody on $90,000 a year of about $50 a week extra disposable income thanks to our income tax cuts than they would have had under a Labor government. On top of that, we've managed to, uh, through our energy policies, drive down electricity prices by about 8% over the last two years, again, helping to provide extra disposable income in Australia. But not, not direct cash payments. That would, that would be irresponsible, get. wouldn't it? Well, again, uh, we'll work through uh, the different specifics uh, very carefully in framing the budget, and I'm not going to uh, run speculation on any one of those different specific options, uh, but you know, we're looking carefully at how we calibrate that, as I say, to not put extra upward pressure on interest okay. rates or on inflation, uh, but equally to make sure that we don't jeopardise Australia's economic recovery, which has driven our jobs market to these uh, really uh, strong results.